it's a bad luck that that it's been one of those deals where if it wasn't for bad luck, Daniel Ray wouldn't have had any so far. Mm-hmm. Um, that car is fast, man, and it handles well. It's just a matter of getting the whole thing put together for for twenty five laps. Yeah, and when it happens. Watch out! That zero one car is coming. It, it, that's a good race car um, with a good driver. Mm-hmm. Just ahead of him, Mike Medell. Now we know Mike's got a oh, win. Yeah. We know how fast he is. Great equipment. Good dude. Um, he was fourth. Justin McCready in the fifteen JT, another winner at Willamette this year, mm-hmm. was third. Second was John Rowden, the twelve R. Newcomer to Willamette. This dude's fast. He's been pretty consistent He's there, been, Earl. Yes, and he has been fast. This is gonna. This is another guy that's going to add his name to the winner's list, and it's not going to take long. I'm going to say in the next three, four races, you're going to see that 12-R car win a race. And it's fast. And he's a good driver. I mean, he's, he's a smart driver. It's a super competitive class. It, it is, mean, top to bottom. And they're all, let's look at the times. I mean, how far apart are they? Well, in the main, yeah. okay, so let's talk best laps. In the main, the best lap was turned in by your winner, Jordan Broughton. Got okay. his fourth win of the year. Yeah. Okay, We know Jordan Broughton, when it comes to the sport mods here in the Pacific Northwest, is pretty much the standard. Yeah, he sets the bar for, he, for he does. we start. Yeah. He's kind of whatever. His program is what everybody else is kind of striving to be. Right. And it's not saying anything bad about anybody else. No. But he definitely, There's some, yeah. There isn't one bad program in the eight cars we just talked no, about. not at all. It's just Jordan and those guys are just you know, half a step ahead of everybody. Um, his best lap, Jordan Broughton's best lap, was a seventeen eight six one in the feature. Um, I didn't bring out qualifying papers or heats. We're just talking about mains tonight. Seventeen eight six one, and the best lap for Mike Wilcox, who was his best lap, was an eighteen eight five nine. Broughton was the only seventeen second car in the feature. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's Imka mod times. But if yeah, <laughs> it, it really is. That, and that's the thing that that I just. We've had this discussion when it comes to the sport mods versus an IMCA modified. Right. Dollar for dollar, the value that you get, you can't beat those sport mods. I think it's one of the best values out there. I really do. And I really do. And, uh, you know, what's neat about it, they are IMCA, so, again, you can run them at any track. Right. So, and there's a lot of three-bar cars out there still. There's plenty of three-bar cars that you could put together and... Be very, very competitive. You don't have to have the forty thousand dollar car to be competitive in this division. Does it help? Yes, it does. You're probably not going to spend forty thousand on an IMCA Sport Mod, no. given the rules that you, you know, the, the shocks that you can run. It's a great class for a guy that wants to run a real race car, right? And be competitive. You can do it on. You can do it affordably. You can. And well, that's what I like about that class. Scott Weinbarger and I have talked in the pits quite a few times, and East Flat said that, that this class will be the one that takes over the Pacific Northwest because you're going to be able to travel more. It's not You're not going to have as much money invested as you would a mod. You're literally going to – your shocks aren't going to kill you right. to do it. Right. So you'll be able to run around, and, and fans will get into it because – the traveling, those guys are going to see those cars more. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You're going to see them at Southern Oregon Cottage Grove, uh, up in up in uh, Washington, what Elma. You'll see those those names from Oregon and what, so all over. And the more you're exposed to that, the more people are going to follow you. Right. So, I agree. And Scott is absolutely correct. I I mean he is absolutely correct when he says that division will be the biggest division. Mm-hmm. I, I don't doubt that for a second. I mean, really don't because we don't have any type of limited late model unless you want to talk about super sport division, which is there. They're on the asphalt slicks and they've got the sideboards. You can call it a limited late model, but it's not. It's a super sport. It's, it's unique to that one track and that one track only. What I like about these, like you were saying, Scott's right. You can run them anywhere. They're under the IMCA sanction. You can do it for half the cost of a late model or close to. Or even a mod. Or that's what I meant, a, a modified right. Yeah. And still be... And we're watching this on the on the speed chart, the James Gang Pizza speed chart at Willamette Speedway. We're watching it. Lap times are right there with the modifieds. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, there's hardly any difference. I remember in qualifying, we were watching that a few weeks ago, and it's just so amazing. It is. It truly is what you're, these guys are doing with these cars. Yeah. 
it's a great class, and it, I, and I agree. Uh, I think that conversation that you had with Scott is, is spot on. This is going to be the big class. It's going to take over because you've got guys out there in modifieds that are that. Yeah. Okay, I know they want to run a modified, but they're not competitive. Mm-hmm. Now they take their car and make it a three bar, move it down here. Now you got it. The, the class gets more competitive. Yep. Top to bottom. and it, Even if it's somebody that races modifieds and wants to slow down, well, not slow down, but just bump it down, mm-hmm. you know? Right. Yeah. I think it's it's yeah, that's, that's a good well, call. Well, and you're looking at the modifieds right now. I mean, those guys are spending tons of money on suspension. That's where the game yeah. is stepping right into. Yeah. Shots. yeah, it's yeah. stepping right into the late model aspect you're of right. it. You're right. Like, you're starting to spend the same amount of money. And, you, I mean, you go look at those bar S cars, those Longhorns. You take a good, solid look going to the pits, that's a late model on the back it, end. It pretty much is. Oh, I know. Schwartz is identical. I, it I, is. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you're looking at four-bar mods that literally that, that pricing game is stepping right into the the late model problem right now. Mm-hmm. And that is the problem with the late model. It's so expensive to run. Right. That, But guys are stepping up for that for the mods right now. That's the class they want to run. But that sport mod class... I wouldn't say it's half less to run, but it's still going to be take, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's still going to be competitively close that in like you said real race car a non-street stock. Well, that's what I mean. I'm talking about a IMCA manufactured car. chassis. Yeah. That's and, what, when and, I said yeah. real race car, that's what I meant was and I got what you were saying. Right. But you people want to get into that class like Dakota. I mean, he's he's he might get bored with the street stocks and he wants to step up and he might go right into sport mods. You never get bored winning. <laughs> and that's <laughs> he well. is don't. Uh but I think yeah, I think you're right, Sam. I do. I think that uh this this in the way we've seen this class explode over the last two seasons where we had three or four racing with the yeah, with the sportsman at Willamette to what this class has become and where it's going. I think that conversation with Scott Weinbarger was spot on. I, I can't disagree or argue with that at all. I think that's 100% correct. Um, up next, Fast Friday was our third and final class. We had the IMCA Modifieds. Twelve cars took the green flag. And there was uh, that was a pretty good race. A little, a little bump and grind in some spots. But that's, you know, Modifieds are when you get a chance, you got to go. These cars are so equal. You, you see a hole, you got to go, and you got to race. Twelfth um, place at the checkered flag uh, broke um, nineteen laps in. Was uh, well, actually eleven laps in. Uh, Jeremy Ritchie in the fifteen J, very fast car. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was running, you know, up in the top four or five. When and I don't even know what happened. I didn't hear. I didn't get a report on the fifteen J. What happened to him? Just kind of pulled off. I missed a lot of stuff. I was racing. So right, I, right. I don't even know half of what's um, going on. 11th place, Lauren Cruzy in the 31. He's Mike, looking a lot more comfortable in the car, I noticed. He is. He, he's start, I think Delilah and him have they're a starting, really, They're starting to develop. They got a gel going on. Mm-hmm. Their relationship's coming along. Yeah, absolutely. 10th um, place, and this was, for me, a surprise. This was a surprise for me in the feature, given... What he did in the heat, Mike Swear in the sixty-three. Um, a little bit of bad luck, a little bit of uh, I, I don't even know what to say about it because I, honestly, I thought it was uh, I thought it was a racing deal. He was actually put to the back. Um, I didn't see it. But I could tell you the conversations that I've had with Mike. I like I like actually talking to Mike in the pits. He's, he's a, pretty mellow. Very. And so if things are getting tense and he's there and we're chatting a little bit, he has flat told me he is driving the car way harder. He he is determined that he was not driving the har- car hard enough, and now he's starting to drive it a little bit harder, and he's right at that point. Well, let's talk about the heat race then. Let's talk about the particular heat race. He got to the front. Okay, and he put up a he had a half straightaway lead on everybody. Okay, and that race went green to checkered. No caution. One car broke out of traffic, that, and I think probably the only and he was in a pretty pretty good heat race. But the one car at that time of night that even had a real shot to catch him once they broke out of traffic was Colin Weinbarger, and that didn't happen. That gap closed a little bit, 
but not a whole bunch. And Mike drove a race that I thought was, to this date, watching him over the last couple of years, the best run I've seen him had. In the, in the heat race, I'm talking. Mm-hmm. Drove the wheels off that car, the forward bike. Now, I talked to Mike earlier in the day when the crew was out there. They were unloading, and they actually had the car up on the lift. And I said, what are you working on? And, you know, Mike being Mike kind of looks at me, that little look, and he says, everything. <laughs> I said, yeah. And he goes, we found some things really, really wrong with this car, and we're going to make some changes. I think we're going to be right. I'm not going to say anything about what those changes were. And when we got into a pretty in-depth conversation about it, um, let me say this. How Mike got that car around the track with the setup that was on prior to those changes tells you right now Mike Swear can be one hell of a driver mm-hmm. because that car, <laughs> I, I, it couldn't have been more wrong. I mean, there was a lot of stuff under there that just wasn't helping. Not at all. Not at all. So for a guy to drive that car the way he's been and keeping it doing what it's been doing, if you knew, and we'll talk about that later off the air, if you knew, impressive. They put the new setup on. He goes out in the in the in the in the heat race, and man, oh man, I'll tell you right now, Mike Swear, Mike Swear is gonna be fast from here on out. I I I promise you that. He's gonna be fast from here on out. That's a good race car under him. Good quality equipment, and Mike is coming into his own. And you can see the confidence. You can see the confidence in the way he's driving the car. That's the biggest thing with any driver. You know, he was kind of down on himself, and then he, they made the changes, and he realized, well, wait a second, this is how this car is supposed to be fast. Well, and he talks to Gray and Colin a lot, bounces a lot of stuff right. on him, and, and right. that was the biggest thing that they were trying to stress to him is drive it harder. It'll stick. Right. It will stick. Mm-hmm. You you just Well, now that the setup is it. right, it, yeah. it, it's going to be easier for him to, like you said, trust it. Mm-hmm. That's going to be, when the car is right and it feels good, you're going to get more out of it, and you're going to start seeing that more from the 63. Just ahead of Mike Swear was the 26 of Brett James uh, for ninth place. Justin Cady in the 6M. Eighth. Seventh was Gray Ferrando. Now, this is, this is Fast Friday we're still mm-hmm. talking about. Um, Craig Castle in the 25 was sixth. Jerry Schramm was fifth. There's a guy that everybody's taking notice in the pits that that car he's in, he's fast. There is no doubt about that. They're all talking about it. That Rage chassis is fast. And Jerry is just a, you know, driver, we've talked about it, drivers like certain feels. Drivers like a certain type of race car. Jerry is a way better modified driver than he is a late model. It just kind of fits how he drives. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you watch Jerry in a late model. He's a he's a good driver. Yeah, he's he's a quality driver in that deal. Um, and that new car, I like the pink one. Not a fan of the green. <laughs> you know that, but um, those Rage cars are they're starting to take notice. They are. They're, that's a dang good car. We're going to talk more about that here in a few minutes. So I got want to bring something up. Justin Duty filled in for uh, Brian Thompson, the forty four T, and finished fourth on Fast Friday. It was good to see him walking around the pits and smiling. Always brings up my morale. Was he? He's he's a happy dude, man. All the time, you know. And it's weird because you, you talk with Justin, and you stand next to him, and you feel tall. You feel you feel small. You know, he's six foot forty. He's a big kid, and I, I start talking with him, and it, pay attention when you talk to him because it's like talking to a giant version of John, his dad. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he really they, they the way they communicate and the way they speak is so identical it, it's crazy it's kind of like you're talking to this big giant version of john <laughs> duty and um they, they changed some things on that car too and he drove it to a fourth place finish and and you see the second half of that race was a, a big difference for the 44t he really started coming in the second half uh third place bryson james in the 13 second was colin weinbarger and your winner for his third winner in a row was the seven of Destin Katie. i told you they found some stuff on that car and it was going to be competitive Yes, it is. Joel stopped in here today. He was in the, in the area, grabbed some lunch, sat down, had a conversation, and uh, they've made some changes on that car. Mm-hmm. Now that car, they, they say they, they really like it. Dustin really likes Justin likes his car, too. It's just from here on out, it's just the small stuff, the fine-tuning. Mm-hmm. He said those cars are just about exactly where those guys want them, and four wins in a row. 
they found they found an awesome baseline for it. And he said that in the interview. He did. Um, 